again, and welcome to Vance Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And, yep, here we are. We are here. <laughs> I had to put my little meter thing in, in my window today because I didn't want to go put money in because there was some guy with light blue head nodding off from some kind of something who was sitting at the parking thing. And I was just like, oh, I don't want to go deal with this nope. right now. No. Um, and... And then as I was kind of right across the street from here, and mm. then there was a fire truck and an ambulance coming up this way. So it kind of like yeah. poked back to be like, oh, are they coming for him? But alas, no, it was just uh, just some dodgy dude. Sleeping up again. Well, no, not he was, even sleeping. He's clearly hanging, nodding off. Whether hanging, it's heroin right. or fentanyl Something. or oxy, it's in that opioid yeah. area, and it was definitely yeah, the that, yeah, yeah, the yeah. nod off. So it's, a, it's um, just it's so sad. And we were saying before the show, and this will sound callous. We don't mean it this way, but honestly, if you want me to care, maybe you got to care first. Right, that care is a little. how you get to recovery is you have to actually believe that. You can do it, and you can. You yep. just have to want to. That's exactly true. So what do we have? We have all kinds well, of budget shenanigans. Yeah, so oh. Last week we talked about how last Tuesday night, because we tape on Tuesdays, um, the aldermen were going to vote on the budget, and guess what? The aldermen voted on the budget. So well, they didn't they, vote they on voted the budget. They voted on something. So, the, so, you know. There's some rules. There should be. There's rules. I don't understand. I I do understand. I understand the motives behind things. So um, we have a tax cap. We have a spending cap. We do not have anything such called a revenue cap. It was funny when we were at the meeting, uh, Andy from Manchester Inc. Link said something, because Dan said, well, you should just keep track of how many times somebody says revenue cap. And he goes, <laughs> well, what do you mean? And he goes, well, there is no revenue cap. And Andy goes, wait, what do you mean? Cause, like what? And then I start doubting myself. And then I'm like, no. And there is no revenue cap. There is a spending cap, which people generally can understand. You're limited to the average of the three prior years CPI, which right now would be 3.57%. So spending cannot increase more than 3.57%. That people get. The tax cap is based on the whole of the taxes, not the tax rate. And even in the union leader article, it said the budget that passed operates within a 3.52% tax increase lower than the tax cap amount. It's not a, per, it's not a number. It is the pool of taxes. If we collect a million dollars in tax revenue, that last year, we can only increase that pool by 3.57%. So if they're not including new construction, because that is another thing that throws people off. <laughs> if we build another million dollars worth yes, of property. If we make enough exceptions, well, no, no one will know I what's mean, happening, I, I, and then we can just do but what I do we get, want. The reason they, the, the new construction is allowed is because the theory would be that there'd be more services required for, but it, but that's just one slice and that's an easy number to also look at and take out. Um, so they throw the word revenue cap in, I think because it just sounds different and people can't follow along. And once you confuse well, it's people, also, it's easier to you pull the wool over their people, eyes. But then also you're not actually spreading mis or disinformation right. or you are, you are because you're, using a, you're like no, oh i'm just going to come up yeah. with a new word and then no one's going to notice that we're not doing what <laughs> we're supposed to do if, like giving the public notice and a time to review the yeah. budget so this the mayor is required by city charter to bring forth a budget within the cap so the mayor's budget never means anything other than we're just going to shove these numbers in until we're <laughs> at the cap, right? We all know that that's not the real budget. In this case, um, she hadn't included any money for severance, which is a sore point, but it still is millions of dollars that weren't included in her budget. So that's not fair. Um, that, that's actually just blatantly not being upfront and honest. If nothing else, include what you must know you must have and take out things that you don't but that's not never how it works so um on tuesday last week um alderman pat long proposed an alternative budget now nobody had access to that budget 
prior to the meeting. Well, the public didn't have the access. The media didn't. The media didn't, and at so, least two Republican I'm, older right, men I'm going to guess not. that Lavasser and uh, Sebastian and, and, and uh, Sapienza three, yeah. probably did not have access to this budget before it was going to be dropped in Actually, front of them I think I vote. read that in the newspaper, yep. um, so let's say that is what so happened. the public, because, okay, we can... Uh, taking out the aldermen because i mean they're the public also um so i had no way of knowing what to object to what to be happy about or anything for all, I, I and even to make it worse so this morning i thought well we can talk about it let's look at what was in the budget so i went to the city website and guess what 2022 is there but 2023 is still a week later not in on the city website. So a week later, we still don't actually get to see what we're spending $378 million on. Now, the math also, I, you know, I'm funny about math. So originally, Craig po proposed $376 million. The final budget was $378 million. So that's $2 million increase, right? She had $189 million for schools. They got $187 she had 167 for the city. They got 169. Where's the other two million? So where did you get these Craig <laughs> that, numbers? That's the Craig. That's the from, from the newspaper yeah. or this is, well, because the numbers are so close. I bet you someone just transposed something. Well, I mean, no, no, but it's like there's two million missing because I can take the they took two million from the city from the school and gave it to the city right here. This that's two million. But the overall budget is two million more. Well, where that two? Where's that two million? Of course, I can't actually tell you because it's not on the website, and we're a week into spending. You know, approved three hundred seventy-eight million. So, so we million. do know our all our all our tax rates are going up. Uh, oh, right? yeah, because and, they were going to go up anyways. And our tax bills are going to go up significantly <clears throat> because also because of the they chose to do the re-eval yeah. in a way that basically is like, you know what, taxpayers, you know what, property owners, we don't really care about you. We didn't furlough anyone. Yeah, yeah. We did some backroom deals while everything was shut down. But, you know, so now we're just going to come and be like, oh. <gasps> Suddenly, you're essential. So I caught on Facebook or someplace, somebody posted, so Jundra Schiani, who's one of the aldermen at large, who voted to approve a budget that the public had no prior knowledge of, um, tweeted, last night the, BO the BOMA approved the fiscal year 23 budget. I am proud to have been part of the team to present a budget. It's nice that there was a team. So a team had at prior access to the budget. Um, and by team, we mean anybody who that wasn't a Republican. Um, that balances increase in revenues coming to our city. So balances money coming from outside the city. So this is state revenues or federal money. Funds the critical needs to keep Manchester moving forward. So I'm not sure which critical needs those are because, again, I can't see in the budget what was. <laughs> it's um, the 700 meters keep, of road. We're going to keep Manchester <laughs> moving forward as long as you aren't driving on the roads filled with potholes because right. those are not easy to move forward on. And balances the fiscal constraints of our residents. No, actually, it doesn't balance the fiscal constraints of our residents. It, it, it exceeded the tax cap. It ex the tax and spending cap had to be overridden. Um, so you did not balance the fiscal constraints. Um, you had total disregard for what families living in Manchester can afford right now. Um, gas is creeping up at five, up to $5 a gallon. Just uh, two years ago, back when the, you know, the mean tweeter was still a president, we were under $2. I mean, yeah, we're talking more than double the gas prices. The uh, food prices are up. I saw uh, everything's up. I saw. Uh, I think it was. Uh, it wasn't the IMF, but it was the uh, International Bank IBS, maybe uh, International Banking Services or something. And they put out a tweet yesterday with the chart, and the the subtext of uh, was, oh, households. Uh, disagree with the official inflation yes. rate, right? And I actually retweeted it and I was like, or, you know, alternative of headline, households actually know right. what's going on right. and we can tell that you're lying to us. Well, so I that's mean, it's, part of the I, thing, I'm right? not sure where the CPI, how it gets, cal you know, I'm sure oh, I no, can take I, into that, it. Well, so, so how it gets calculated is every, so it got calculated X way in the 70s. Then they were like, Oh crap, people can tell that uh, 
things get more expensive when we print money out of thin air for all the free stuff y'all are demanding. And so they were like, oh, so they have literally changed the definition of what is in that basket of goods where we are currently at a stage where uh, it uh, basically excludes food, I think. And all the basic needs, food, energy, and gas, I think are like out of it now because they were like, ah, we can't, right? So if you want to know what is actually happening, I highly recommend Shadow Stats. I think that's a really good site. They don't seem to have an agenda beyond being like, here's the data and you can look at all these data points depending on Oh, do you want to see it in the 1980s right. metrics? Do you want to see it before they changed M3 right, right. definitions? Do you want to see it before they changed M1? You know, what, what's happening with, you know, a qualitative easing, yeah. quantitative yeah, yeah, easing, yeah, yeah. like all of that, right? So you can go find the data. But you can the, just be an ordinary person going to the gas pump. And see that. And be like, I mean, what is happening? To say that April's April's CPI was 8.3, at 8.3%, you know, that... That's a lot. That's higher than it's been since. Um, it's the ni- highest it's ever been. I think, no, it was right um, 19. Oh, I have it in my notes. It was nine. Wait, it's right here. It's the highest it's been since 1980. In 1980, it was 12.5. Um, in 1990, it was 6.1. But um, anybody who remembers 1980, it wasn't a good time. Um, things were not prosperous by any means. Um, but you. You you know that you're paying more than eight point three percent more for things. Gas is double right. plus. Food is expensive. I mean, it, it's funny somebody posted, "Hey, the only good thing, only food price that seemed to have gone down was bacon," and I was all excited. I'm like, "I'm going to go stock up on bacon," and I'm in the store and it's still five ninety nine a pound, and I'm like, "Okay, remember when we used to get bacon for a dollar ninety nine a pound? So that's double." Forget buying eggs. I don't know what the deal with eggs. I know there was an avian flu outbreak or something, so we must have killed all the chickens. But eggs are like three dollars a dozen for just plain old eggs. But yeah. I'm like, how? Do, how can anybody with a straight face say that it's only eight percent increase? Because it's not. But you, you know, are- all of this in some ways does play in our favor because I think what's happening is, um, you know, we're being told one story. Mm. But but our actual experience of it is different. I mean, we saw that throughout COVID, right? Yeah. Where, where it was like, oh, well, you know, everyone in a lockdown state was told one story and there was New Hampshire and Florida and it was an right. entirely different story. And yet life went on, you know. And so I think people are just, just waking waking up and that this is an exploitable opportunity. And for anyone who's running for office, of course, you know, if if you're interested in this stuff, it's a no brainer when you're knocking on doors yeah. and stuff to really have that discussion with our neighbors. Because the point is, there's nothing in this budget that says to me, hey, we actually care about you. We right. actually want to balance the right. fiscal needs. I mean, I- the, because you know why? Because enrollment in the schools has hmm. dropped by, I believe, like twelve hundred people or something. It's like a, a lot. significant percentage. It might even be like ten to twenty percent. I mean, I don't, I don't actually know what that number is. Don't quote me right. on that. I, I but but it's a significant it. number, and yet the school budget went up. So it's like, come on, guys. Well, even just in basic, like, oh, how does stuff work? Well, we have. A hundred thousand less customers. I know. Let's make our products more expensive. That's nonsensical. Well, I mean, that know, is how you run failure. That is a failure model. So you know. I would like to know. I mean, I really am curious. I would like to know. I know what the mayor proposed, so I don't know if it's the same. I'd like to know how much my how many roads we're going to pave because or we're going to repair. I keep saying pave, and not all of them are getting <laughs> paved. They're just getting repaired. Um, because in the mayor's budget, it was only 1.4% of the budget. And that's like, strikes me as one of the things that everybody says they want taken care of. They want the roads to be in decent shape. They like their trash to get picked up. They would like, um, the snow to get plowed. Um, and you know, when you're talking with people, people, I know when, uh, when I ran for alderman and when I taught, helped other people run, you know, one of the biggest things that people complain about is speeding. Like, people don't like it when people are speeding down their street. So, 
you know, they're not really concerned about 1.1 million extra for severance, and they're not really concerned. They're definitely... It's well, they don't know about they, those well, things. I mean, part of our job is to make people yes. know, hey, I mean, I'll tell you this. When I, we went home after the show mm. last week, and I was talking to Louie, and I said, oh, like 20... What, 26 what would it, what? million in, in pension it was, costs. It was 30%, basically, of the school... Was it the school budget or the city budget? Whatever. But it was a significant portion, almost a third of whatever chunk we were were talking about last week was just for pensions yeah. and and louis was like what a right. third of the budget it's not how's a, that it, sustainable it's not it's a, not it's not a third but it's a lot it was like 26 million dollars and i believe it was like 16 percent. but when you're but thinking, it was 26 million out of one of these two one no okay, at tw so, uh, well yes yeah, on the, if okay, you include 10%. no no 26 million on the city side i don't it's very hard to follow because like i understand how the pensions work and I'm not 100% sure when I'm saying, I know we're spending at least $26 million of the 189 that the, uh, or 169 that the city budget on just pensions. And I'm not here to say we should just uh, default on the pensions for the people who are already promised them and getting them. But the reality is, is people need to under start understanding where their taxes are going to because it's not going to fix the roads. It's going to things that don't impact your life at all unless you're a recipient it's, of one of those pensions. So it's basically underwriting a bad system that is entirely yep. unsustainable from a fiscal perspective. Like you can't just keep putting more on this one end and expecting other, you know, it, it just, it can't It's got to pop. The bubble's got to pop someday. And, and you know, we, I mean, certainly for years have been yelling about, hey, can we reform stuff? Hey, will you listen to this? Hey, maybe could we do a tax moratorium? Yep. I mean, I can only imagine if Tammy hadn't gone door to door 12 years ago to get that tax cap in, where we would be at oh, this I, I, stage. It would be awful because at that, I mean, I remember when prior to Frank into becoming mayor, we were facing like double digit tax increase. It was out of, that is why Frank Ginta got elected because people were done with the tax increases. It was too much. And we're back up at those numbers again. If they use the, the tax and spending caps as a crutch, it was meant to be the ceiling unless there is a true emergency. Budgetary items do not constitute an emergency, but that's why it's called a budget. You make it work with what you have. And... And that's actually really important. I would recommend for folks who are curious, I would go to Granite Grok and search for Ian Underwood mm. and look at the document he wrote about the Croydon school mm -hmm. stuff. So his position was sort of like, this isn't a budget. If they come up with, a, they're like, this is how much money we need. That is actually definitionally extortion mm -hmm. because they're not saying this is you know this is how much we have what can we do within these yep. means how they're do we saying, make this pile of money they're work. saying oh we have 3.9 or whatever the right. cap is we're going to add that on and then woo and then we're going to spend even more than that and kind of up you know try and make it unclear what we're spending what on right i mean why can't we well, just go I, I just well, like a clean slate. Well, that's what Victoria was saying at the Aldermanic meeting last week. She says, why can't we just do zero-based budgeting? Make them come back with an actual budget every year. Don't just take last year's budget and say, well, we need more. Right. Tell us what you, you actually need. That's how government budgeting should work. Now, interesting, just a couple things, because I don't think I said these in the show last week. I might have said them on the TV. And the um, so the pensions... In five years, our pensions have increased $7.3 million. Not $7.3 million over five years total. Five years ago, fiscal year 18, we spent $7.3 million less that year than we will spend this upcoming year. That's a lot of money. $7.3 million would take care of one quarter of the roads in the city. Just the increase would do that. Um, and then we're talking about the CPI it's going to go up because keep in mind, it's an average over three years. So this year we're just factoring in one bad year and two no kind of normal years. Next year we'll only have one kind of normal year and two bad years. And then the third year, it'll be just forget it. You're screwed. So CPI is at 8.3, which we all might agree is not really the number, but let's just say it is. Um, that means next year's cap will be 5.57. And since they're using this as a crutch, you know your tax, your, your spending is going to go up at least 5.57%. The next year, if we just assume that the, 
next year's CPI was at seven. So if we think there's another year of this progressive um, inflation, the following year, fiscal year 25, we're looking at 7.61% as the cap, which means they're up pushing up towards 10%. This, it compounds. It gets worse and worse and worse every year. And it, the number has just gotten so big and they just basically lie to you so often and make and brush things under the rug and scare you into thinking that if you don't go for this, you know, 3.5% 3 three point whatever percent tax uh, tax increase and spending increase that suddenly they're not going to I mean the picture in the union leader is of a guy mowing the the yards and I'm like <laughs> so they make you sound like oh my god your trash isn't going to get picked up and yeah. we're not going to be able to mow the lawn unless we increase spending by See, you know four million dollars that's why they're so clever I'm taking did I tell you I'm taking this class mm -hmm. at Naki Loeb yeah. about disinformation so the last class is tomorrow night I was just sort of curious yeah. to see what it was you know, well, I, well also what they're teaching yeah. and the professor is from SNU and I was like I want to see what you're teaching I got some opinions it's been it's been interesting yeah. like he and I you know we I'm not sure we see eye to eye, no. and I think he was very surprised with my point of view where I was like, let's talk about government disinformation, because if you think your sources are the New York Times and Snopes, I got some educating to do. Um, but anyway, so, so with... So partly with that, this morning, I started watching a new documentary. I forget. I think it was on Netflix. And it, it basically is about what the role of government should be. And it's some comedian. Um, I want to say, oh, sorry. I, I'll make better notes for next week. But, um, but this guy was like, let's talk about what the role of government should be. So then it starts and he's talking to Obama and Obama's filling out his tax forms. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how this setup is already, right? So this show, I only watched the first 10 minutes, had to do with food. And mm -hmm. so they're talking about the FDA and what the role of the USDA should be and all of that. But here's the thing. It starts with the premise and in this case, the premise was everyone used to die because meatpacking was disgusting. Then Upton uh, Sinclair wrote a book called The Jungle, and he wrote an expose about how gross it was. No one talks about that. It was kind of like exaggerated to yep. make a point, whatever. Roosevelt read it, and then he was, uh, was it Roosevelt? Someone read it, <laughs> and then and then he, he was like, oh, we need to take care of this problem. But here's the thing. They present that as the facts. But that is the point where we have to go, hold on a second. I know this is the story, the narrative, the information that everyone's been told. But what if we look at it from a different perspective? And if you look at it as, oh, this was around about the time we figured out how germs work right. and what gross and <laughs> nasty a things are. There's reason why things work. Businesses were already doing this in private. They were taking care of it. It was what was happening. Seven years later, the government's like, oh, we must do something. And then they jump in and then they claim credit yeah. for things for that one, that was the free being market fixed. was already doing. Yeah. And two, now you've created this bureaucracy on top of it. And in this show, they said one out of 16 people in America is now a federal employee. Oh, I believe it. It's that ridiculous. That sounds bananas to me. That it does not sound good. It's so, so here's Anyways. the thing. If we can go back to a blank slate, yes, with something like the the budget, right? And we can go. You know what? Scrap it all. What do we Let's need? Let's take a right. look. What do we actually need? What should we be paying for? Who can we cycle off? Yeah. Where can we make cuts? Right. What I mean, I know if our thing's going up by 10%, like I know I'm not getting paid 10% more if the CPI goes up to 10%. Yep. Um, so we all start to struggle more. And then they're taking more. But lest we forget, the inflation is the government's fault yep. In too. the first place. All right. <laughs> okay, on a, on a more, on a happy note. Positive note. Um, this coming weekend is Memorial Day weekend. It's like crept up already. So most people aren't working oh, I have on some Monday. Yep. Parties. Yeah. Um, so enjoy the weekend. It's not going to be crazy hot like last week. It's going to be on the 70s. May weather. I nice. kind of like it. Um, I want to remind people that the following weekend, Saturday and Sunday, June 4th and 5th, is the Animal Shelters um, plant sale. It's a great, great plant sale. It's for a great cause because it supports the animal shelter. Um, that is up on Dunbarton Road. I always get that. Is that Dunbarton Road or Goffstown Road? Uh, it's across the street. It's just on the same road as the dump. 
that's, that's what it is. Um, but that's Saturday and Sunday, June 4th and 5th. And for those following along in the political world, the filing period for state offices, state and county offices, is uh, st- Tuesday, June 1st through the 10th. So yeah, that'll be I think this is going to be interesting. Did you see the union leader? I did. Had the, the they were talking about a lot of state senators aren't running yep. again. So there's going to be a lot of... There's going to be a lot of mix-up. It'll be interesting to watch. Yeah, so I For did those see, of us that um, watch this crazy, boring stuff called I, politics. I did see that Bob Guida is not running yep. again. I think that's a loss. But yep. I do believe Tim Lang is going to step in there. Really? So I, think I like that, Tim. Yeah, I think too. Tim's a very, I mean, not just about the COVID stuff. I just know him from, you know, I've talked to him enough times. He's come down and helped um, with doors and stuff here yep. in Manchester. He's actually very, um, he's a doer. He's, he's thorough. He likes to get this information yep. and he's just And trying. I like how he communicates. Yes. I follow his page and recommend people do yep. just to be like, oh, he'll give you a breakdown. Yep. People said this, this happened. Yep. We voted this way or here's the budget and here's why we made these decisions and here's this. Well, when I get elected, I decide that I definitely should probably get on the committee that deals with pension reform. Yes. Just and because that's, you know, years and years ago I was on the Labor Committee, which I'm glad to be on again if that's where I end up, but um, because of right to work and unions and stuff. Um, but I think I would like to try something different. I think I do want to, I think that might be um, EDNA. Executive, uh, <laughs> I don't really know. So, anyways, I'm going to find out, and I think that's where I want to spend my time because I really would like to be more fluent in yeah, pensions. Yeah, and, and and honestly, I think people should get involved. We are facing serious problems, and you know, you want the right people in there who actually that's understand right. what's happening, well, not people, because what they told right. you. And people but who are going to be responsive to the needs of their constituents, and I don't feel like we have that a lot. Um, I mean, does anybody watching this actually? Have they ever talked to their state rep? I'm going to guess no. Anyways, they're giving us the warning, warning. Time is running out. Um, Plant sale at the weekend from next. um, Memorial Day this weekend. Get out and barbecue. um, Party, party. And uh, have a good time. And we will see you guys again next week. Adios. Bye, guys.